welcome back to the shop. Got this piece of bar stock in here today that I need to rough down in order to be able to get through the spindle bore on the Monarch. Uh, this is about an inch and a little over an inch and five eighths. An inch and five eighths is about the biggest you can get through the hole. So this is not quite uh, being hot rolled, it won't quite come through the head. So we got to do it out here long like this. I've already got a center put in the end of it. And now I'm just going to trim this thing down to roughly an inch and a half to where it'll go through the spindle bore and then be ready to flip it and uh, start cutting them out. So let me fire this thing up and we'll see how it does. I'm still running the same insert that I was last time. This uh, chrome is a new black Seco that we're trying out to compare to my Kenna metals and we'll see how it does. Uh, right now I'm going to be running uh, 500 RPM roughly and uh, uh, I'm not sure, it'll probably be only about a 50 thou depth of cut, so we're going to take the feed rate up to 20 to see if we can make sure that it breaks the chip and turn this thing loose. So, let's we'll start cutting. Six oh five. So let's just go ahead and take a hundred off of it, and that should be good. See how it likes taking a hundred. Well, it's quite a bit on this long length, so nothing supporting it in the middle. All right, let me back the feed rate back down to fifteen. We'll try that. lost the insert edge but it's starting to vibrate on me getting here in the middle so let me try an insert with a little different uh, some less uh, let me try an insert with more rake and see if it can get this to work without putting a steady on here or flipping it I'm going to try and feed in before this chatter hoping I can take it out once you get chatter started, it wants to just keep on.
is deep here. crater in that insert already on that corner. Oh, if you can see that right there where that chip's been curling over, it's already paid into that insert. Mm, I don't know what, so probably a foot it's run maybe. That's not real good. come from that vibration so let me uh, let's turn this around to a new edge <laughs> we'll try that thinner cut again I'm actually gonna come in and come back to try and get off that chatter
get out of the way so I can work this thing. Alright, so I'm sure that any of you that watch my videos already know the drill on what I'm making here with these cam followers. These just happen to be some Cummins ones today, so they're a little bit different. So I thought I'd show you doing one of those. And I know everybody likes to watch some good chip formation, so we'll see if we can get a decent job on that. I'm taking anywhere from uh, 100 to 125 depth of cut, depending on which pass I'm on. I take a heavier cut uh, off the top while there's more meat here, and then I reduce it a little bit as I go along. The uh, finish diameter is not super critical because these are going to be hard turned. I got to leave at least 20 thousandths for the heat treat, so I got enough material to clean up. And I've got everything set here for my dimensions where I can do this pretty quick. So let's fire this up and get them knocked out.
from now when it be finished up, ready to go in the heat treat oven. Well, here they are. They're uh, ready for some ATP coating and heat treating. Probably what I'm gonna try. I don't think I'm gonna stainless wrap all these. I don't think I've even got enough stainless wrap to do that. But I do have some more coating and it seemed to work okay last time, so I think I might give it a try here again and see what it does. Uh, using a little different uh, version this time. The last one really was bad about flaking. So we'll see how this one does. And uh, that'll be the next video probably. So I got to uh, manage to have enough material to get uh, 14 of each. So I've got uh, two extra. In case uh, something doesn't come out just exactly like it should, I st still should have a full set. So th these are for Cummins and this is a John Deere. It's not a lot of difference in either one, just a little bit. But uh, kind of the same idea, they do the same thing. So there's not a lot of new technology here. The only difference is between these and some stock ones is, is these aren't going to break and shatter. And they wear longer if you run a lot of spring pressure, which is pretty common on engines that are running 100 pound boost and a lot of RPM. They usually run a fair bit more spring pressure than stock. So this is one of the ways to combat that is with uh, better material. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.